With the help of seven voluntary countries, EU JAMRAI performed a mapping of European research priorities and gaps on antimicrobial resistance. Results highlight the current European priorities. All participating countries consider that fundamental research on AMR and strengthening surveillance are priorities. Six out of seven define as priority the assessment of best practices and strategies for antibiotic stewardship, and five out of seven consider that the development of antibiotics alternatives to antibiotics or diagnostics is also a pressing matter. The three critical gaps identified by this mapping effort include a lack of research in the environmental field, in the food safety area and on how to improve clinical trials for antimicrobials. While not being as alarming as these three gaps, there is a fourth gap of great concern, the lack of research in the field of infection prevention and control. As a part of our work in EEU JAMRI, looking at research and innovation, we looked at existing global research agendas in order to see that they matched up with the priorities of national action plans and their uh, priorities for research. We found that infection prevention and control was often missing in the, nation, in the global research agendas. And IPC is such a critical part and needs its research. Um, IPC may not be considered sexy, it's talking about hand washing and other things, but as we've seen with COVID-19, uh, IPC is, an, is a very important part in order to control infections and AMR. If we can uh, have less infections, then we have less resistant infections. People need to realize the importance of IPC and our research in the field. IPC goes well beyond hand washing. Often IPC is our last resource when we don't have effective treatment for infection. So last resort to prevent the spread of infection. I think the COVID-19 crisis highlighted that well. IPC must be at the cornerstone of any healthcare system. For instance, purchase of sink must be informed by evidence, evidence on how likely people are going to use them and evidence on how to disinfect them. That's why we need research in the field because guidelines and evidence are still lacking. When IPC research projects compete for funding against other thematic areas such as breakthrough technologies to combat climate change, big data against social inequities, or potential new cancer treatments, they are often perceived as dull, receiving low innovation marks. EU JAMRAI has developed a list of IPC research priorities covering gaps in the field. This list was built from a literature review validated by two groups of experts, published on an international journal and widely disseminated through EU JAMRAI network. Now we have identified these knowledge gaps. We need to include them in research agendas and ensure that the necessary necessary resources can be committed to fill them. In other words, what we want is facilitate the appropriation of these research gaps and aware policymakers about the need to finance invention prevention and control research. Antibiotic resistance imperils global health. New antibiotics, alternatives, diagnostics and strategies to combat AMR are necessary. Yet contrary to this public health need, antibiotic innovators and manufacturers are struggling. Physicians use new antibiotics as last resort to preserve their efficacy. Whereas this is sound stewardship, it also disincentivizes innovation since for company revenues come from unit sales. As a result, large pharmaceutical companies are leaving the field because the market is unattractive. Today, antibiotic innovation only rely on SMEs who are also failing to cover their development costs. During the last two years, three SMEs developing antibiotics went bankrupt. This shows that today the antibiotic market is not safe and is unpredictable. Simultaneously, shortages of older antibiotics are increasing. This problem has been exacerbated during the COVID-19 pandemic. Supply chains have been unable to meet demand as well as challenged by supply disruptions due to lockdowns and border closures. Mm -hmm. 
One of the aspects of EU Jamrai that we're very pleased with is that we've had the opportunity to talk with policymakers about their perspectives on novel reimbursement mechanisms to stimulate antibiotic innovation. And policymakers have come with a very clear message. They want access to antibiotics for the right patient at the right time. It doesn't matter if it's an old antibiotic or a new antibiotic. They want access so that the patients can have the right antibiotic. Um, new antibiotics need to have better clinical evidence to understand where they can be used. Um, but the older antibiotics, we have a huge problem with shortages. This has been a problem before COVID. It's still a problem during COVID. Uh, one area that we've been calling for is greater transparency in the supply chain so we can understand which of these older antibiotics actually have vulnerable supply and we can work on measures uh, to make them more robust. But first, we have to know which older antibiotics are in jeopardy. Several prominent reports have assessed the challenges to antibiotic access and innovation and included poll incentives in the recommendations. The objective of these incentives is increasing revenues for marketed innovative antibiotics. To understand countries' perceptions of these recommendations, EU JAMRAI performed in-depth interviews with policymakers and AMR experts in 10 European countries and three more countries from other continents, thanks to the support of Global AMR Research and Development Hub. The aim of the interviews was to understand the barriers and facilitators for implementing incentive through frank and anonymous dialogue. While 11 countries expressed general support for antibiotic incentives, almost all are uncertain which incentive is appropriate for their country, how to implement an incentive and how much it will cost. They prefer a pan-European pool incentive rather than setting up their own national solutions. So, there is a clear need for specific, detailed incentives that national policymakers can assess, tailor, and implement to ensure access to important antibiotics that meet public health needs.